that music. He's not a bat, he's a man who fights crime And we're gonna watch him fight for a minute at a time With John and Will and I guess you just rhyme It's Bat Minute! Hello and welcome once again to Bat Minute Returns, the podcast where we take a frying pan to Tim Burton's 1992 Batman sequel, Batman Returns, one minute at a time. I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. I am wannabe Catwoman, your other host, John Parker. Uh, and today we're joined once again by a uh, YouTuber, uh, director, and uh, imminently pregnant Stephanie Palacino. Who uh, may may well give birth on the show? She is so on the verge here, so it's very tense. It's tense at the minute. Yeah, who knows? You know, uh, weirder things have happened. You know, but if you do get sent in, though, we can get like the doctor's opinions of Batman Returns, and maybe maybe you, if you can show them this this minute through the phone. Doctor, this is the NHS, all right. You get your midwife, and that's about it, unless you're dying. <laughs> yeah. I, I can confirm, working for the NHS, yes, that is indeed how it would go down. <laughs> But this is like the close the closest you get to podcasting on the edge is like we could podcast on the on the tip of a cliff or we could get someone who is just ready to give birth any second. <laughs> well, it's not really any second. If I start having contractions, then I'll tell you guys. I like I've had I've accidentally had them before they had to stop me uh, going into place. Yes, but if you do have them. <laughs> so I, I know what they feel like. If you do have them, you are contractually obliged to finish the show. Oh, of I, course. I, I'll do my best. Yes, yes. I'll do my best. <laughs> No, no, you're actually supposed to do things to distract you. You're not supposed to just, like, sit there and, like, you know, ah, you know, scream it out. They're like, no, 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 you're supposed to relax. See, the irony of going into labor is they tell you, the more relaxed you are, the quicker you go into labor. But the quicker your labor is, the stronger the contractions are. What? So it's like, yeah, so you got to relax while the pain is increasing <laughs> so so it's like the worst thing ever it's like okay and they were like they make you take a class like well you don't have to but you know the NHS just gives you like a free like antenatal class um and i'm and they're telling you what to do they're like hug your pet eat some chocolate maybe take a soak in the bathtub and i'm like okay so you're doing all this stuff where you're about to like go into labor or you're in labor already they call it actually already labor like there's labor and then there's active labor it's like two things but uh you know as a as a lovely american i'll tell you long live the nhs man we don't know what we were, yes. what we were missing i keep having to explain this to like the idiots in my country like i'm like you guys don't understand they're like oh yeah we heard it's terrible i'm like the only thing way it's bad is because they keep cutting the funding for it but actually it's amazing yes. like you guys don't know you know what it is i went to the hospital i broke my foot i left like it was like a three hour like from from in the door to out and you know which is like still fairly all right like even in america that's like a normal standard um and mm. i'm like and i go and i paid nothing nothing <laughs> do you understand this <laughs> but anywho <laughs> i think i think selena needed to uh uh, yeah, she needs an NHS in her life. She should have yeah. gone straight to that hospital. She's not in the right frame of mind. <laughs> she didn't. Her 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 job did not uh, give her those <laughs> benefits. There was no healthcare plan. In you think he would job. have given you quite a lot of benefits, <laughs> being just... his like, well, I was going to say his assistant, but no. As we've established in previous minutes, she calls herself her, his assistant, but mm. she is just a secretary. She she is the precursor to Dwight Schrute, basically. <laughs> yeah. <of the> whole, <laughs> like, <laughs> It's like, oh no, like, oh, you're assistant manager. No, I'm assistant to the manager. <laughs> like, Basically, but, uh, she, yeah, she's Dwight. And uh, yeah. so, does that mean she's going to be in the sequel to the Meg? Oh God, I hope so. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. oh, I didn't get to watch the Meg yet. Is it good? Oh, it's, it's good by that. Pretty good. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Doesn't live up to the crank level of insanity. Oh, good. I, I love those. Yeah, that's an impossible standard to live up to, though. Crank is like this. But like, that's the thing, though. If you it's kind of like I'm still, you know, me and my friends were actively campaigning for like a, a crank three because we just wanted it to be called for him to go to go to become a movie star. And we would call it Cranky Goes to Hollywood. And that was our whole <laughs> that was our whole pitch. Uh, 
But then it's like, what? Where can you go with it though? He's already turned into like monsters and stuff. It's like there's there's always the, those type of things that like those weird Hollywood pitches. Like my husband once came up to me to ask. This was a legit question, and it's always funny in a German accent, which is what he has. And he's like, "Was there a sequel to Con Air?" And I'm like, "What? No." And he's like, "Yeah, no, wasn't it? You know, it took place on a train, Con Train." And I was like, "No, there was no Con Train." He's like, "Yes, there is." And we had this debate about whether the existence of Con Train is a thing. And we're <laughs> like, and then I thought be. there should be a Con Train, right? I think, I think there is. There is talk of a sequel to Con Air happening, though. Even though it's one of those things like, I love Con Air, but like, nah. Like, where, where, where else you gotta go with it? <laughs> it's so '90s too. Space. Have you, have you ever seen like it's a conservative's dream? Like the whole movie. Like somebody did an analysis of it i was like wow it's totally true the the main character is a good old boy from the south who's like you know in the military the the evil people are all intellectuals uh you know that's what cyrus was he was like a you know a freaking phd candidate uh the yeah yeah, that's like oh what like a black guy who's also very educated that was the other uh villain um the gay guy (laughs) like it's like all the villains are like like liberals that they hate (laughs) (laughs) i was just always felt bad though for that guy who's in forrest gump the like bubba from forrest gump who's like nick cage's best friend for just being plot plot point to the character because the whole thing is like I, I can't get off the plane because I need to oh, get yeah, him yeah, his yeah. insulin his, or whatever uh, it is friendly black guy and then as soon as he gets him the insulin he gets shot and it's like oh I need to make sure he gets to a hospital it's like give the guy something else to do like let this character have some dignity instead of just being like I'm just the, I am just the weight that is holding Nicolas Cage down here oh man and there was who Danny Trejo is like the rapist Mexican yeah um, <laughs> Um, there was, yeah, exactly. Typical things, liberal, like, like everything that Republicans say they hate is like that. <laughs> the thing is, though, you look at it that way, it's like, yeah, that's pretty horrible. If you ignore all that, Gone Air is a pretty great movie. <laughs> so it's one of those, like, no. Yeah, no. And Dave Chappelle <laughs> dies. You know what? I, I don't care. We all, as long as you can accept it for what it is, which is, it's like cheesy 90 garbage, 90s garbage, but, you know, it's, it's like... Still great. Like, what's the other one? Oh, Face Off. That's another one of those. Fantastic as well. That's like, that's like back to back. I was I think the Cage had to leave the production of one of those early to go to shoot the other. I think it was literally like, yeah, I need to wrap up Face Off here because I'm going, I'm going across the street to shoot Con Air. But anywho, we're not here to talk about Con Air. We're here to talk. We didn't even introduce the minute yet. Uh, this is. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go on quite a rant. <laughs> but this is, uh, yeah, it's minute thirty-two. Of Batman returns. Minute thirty-two begins with uh, Selena taking out her answering machine with a flourish, and it uh, ends with her <gasps> rifling through her rifling through her closet to see if she finds any suitable clothing, and uh, oh, maybe she does. We'll have to find out. Oh. Um, as we said in last time, and I still, like, this scene especially, this minute really uh, <laughs> sent home, she's not getting back her deposit. <laughs> she, like, I love how she just has, like, a can of spray oh, paint, do, like, black know. spray paint just yeah. in a closet. Like, like does everyone else have it? Do you? Like, I do because I actually do spray painting, like, spray paint sometimes. So I'm like, but I had to buy that. I was like, <laughs> I it wasn't just... There wasn't just some like, oh, wait, hold on. Let me just go get my trusty <laughs> spray paint cans. Hold on. Yeah, so I, fair, we don't see all the, but maybe Selena does have like real goth artwork that she does. And it's just like, maybe that she keeps that side repressed, but now it bursts out. I get really sad. I get really sad immediately though, when she starts destroying these teddies. Oh, okay. Yeah. That scene where like, I thought to myself, like how they don't go down that way. Like, I don't know if anyone's ever used a food extractor before. I don't even really understand how they work. Yeah, we have them in the States. We have them. They're crazy dangerous. They are literally, chop off your fingers, crazy dangerous. Uh, but we all have them. And um, like it is so that you can just basically pour whatever the hell you want down the sink and it'll just liquidate it for you. But there, what was it like? So the way these stuffed animals go down, like that's not how that, that couldn't possibly work that way. Yeah, it gets rid of, like, know. stews and stuff like that, but it's not going to take down, like, ten stuffed animals. Like, that's going to clog <laughs> your sink. Is it, like, the passing of time happens here? Because it seems like she's got to bundle them in this sink. 
And she's really going to work on that monkey. Like, she, she hates that monkey. <laughs> she's going to work then, on the monkey. Yeah, yeah, cuts to Selena's face, cuts back, and then it's like, oh, they're all... Uh, has it been, like, 20 minutes since she's got them all down? Because <laughs> you think after 20 minutes, she's been like, whew, man, this is this is taking a lot of work. <laughs> like, I maybe should have just thrown them out the window or something. It would have been way better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought the same thing. I was like, so she's thrown down, like, 12 of them, and there's just a tiny bit of fluff at the end. Like, I was like, no. That's not what's happened. What's happened is you tried to throw about three of them down there. Uh, whatever buttons were on there have just gotten jammed into the motor, along with, like, you know, it's, like, basically a bunch of fibers, which are also jamming that motor. That's not, it's, it doesn't, it's not made of freaking magic, <laughs> all right? It'll, like, chop up meats that are pre-cooked, but it's not going to just, like, take out anything you don't want anymore. Like, I don't want this to exist. This scene may... In fact, have been influenced directly by the comics. Uh, you know, it's a slight thing. So, yeah, maybe and maybe not. There's a very similar scene from uh, the the storyline, Abon Masquerie, from Batman Volume One, Issue Three Eighty Seven, from September Nineteen Eighty Five, uh, in which uh, the character of Black Mask try, uh, trying to get rid of the last of uh, the other part of his personality, Roman Sionis. Uh, he goes back to his childhood home and uh, sets all his stuffed toys on on fire. Uh, and if you see one of the shots, there actually is like a little cat doll that looks a bit similar to the one in Shrek's department store. So there's the odd chance that maybe they took influence from that. But I don't know. Have you guys ever destroyed any of your childhood toys? Because I'm too old no, for this. No, I can't bring myself to do it. I, I get very attached to inanimate objects. I can't even throw away a pen that's run out of ink. I feel sad for the <laughs> pen because it can no longer fulfill its purpose. It's like John never goes to visit old folks' homes, landing in and going like, look at how old you've become. And they were just like, something much worse has happened to you, John. <laughs> well, my dad probably does think that. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the thing that's in here. She takes a frying pan to a picture. And the thing is, this is really getting me curious because we know exactly what her beef is with Max Shrek because he obviously, you know, belittled her and then, you know, threw her out her window. Like, but like, at this moment, though, she... She takes like a frying pan to I've tried to freeze frame it as much as I can. It looks to be like a, a picture of like a kind of black and white picture of a couple standing with a, like a, a baby in a pram, which are presumably her parents. She seems to have a real sort of disdain for her mother calling and the mother seems to pester her a lot. But at the same time, it's like, I want to know more about what's the deal with Selena Kyle's mother that she, you think in this situation, like my boss threw me out a window. I almost died or I did die. And then I came back. Is the disconnect so severe between her and her family that she can't even go to them and be like, this happened to me? And they'd be like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Or it'll be a real like, I told you to, so, Selena. And the, you know, what, what, what is the relationship here that she takes a frying pan to a picture of her parents? I don't know. Like, because there's so many incarnations of Catwoman. Um, it's interesting because, like, this version, even when I was a kid, my favorite version because I'm a 90s kid, is the 90s Batman cartoon, obviously. Like, that's the real Catwoman. One of these other imposters, they're not the real deal for me. Mm. <sighs> that's, uh, I gotta say, though, like, this this may tread some toes. The animated Batman Catwoman was never a big... Because it, it, they really focus on her being, like, an environmentalist. Environmentalist. She was an environmentalist. And I, yeah, and I was... Because my first version of Catwoman that I knew was this movie. So I was like... That's not Catwoman. Catwoman was supposed to be like this crazy, vengeful, going out and like electrocuting men to death and stuff. All, that, all this business. Oh, I and yeah, that that's true. Like they do the odd, the odd episodes where she's like a very minor side character and she only appears for like a scene or two. Great, but then when it's like they do a lot of weird episodes with her, where it's like there's one where she turns into like a tiger person. Oh, she does Whoa. that weird Doctor Monroe. Uh, like I, I don't want to say parody, but it kind of seemed like the. Island of Doctor Monroe. <laughs> like uh, I didn't get it. I didn't get it as a kid, but as an adult, I was like, it's "Island of Doctor Monroe, right?" Like, like that's exactly yeah, what it yeah. is. Um, I mean, yeah, but there always be ones like, "Oh, like, oh, it's, it's, it's always animal rights yeah. stuff." And it's like, eh, I'm not, I'm not feeling this. <laughs> I don't know what it. Is. Maybe that's just me as a person, but I just like, yeah, I never. And that, like, and that version of Selena Kyle has always seemed a lot more innocent. Then, like, she's just out to help the animals and stuff. And like, she'll steal stuff occasionally. And she's, you know, a very smart alecky and stuff. But, like, my, my, my version in my head, like, oh, Catwoman's like a psycho. Like, that's her whole thing. Like, she's not out protecting animals. It's like, oh, she's out for herself and stuff. And that's what you get more in other iterations. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I personally am not a big fan of the... Uh, that's, that's, that's really interesting because that was the opposite. I saw the Batman 90s version first. 
Then I saw this version and I didn't like this version for the same reason. Like I was like, that's not Catwoman. Catwoman is not ah. so skanky. <laughs> no, not skanky. She's perfect. Not very skanky. I mean, now you can appreciate the, the trashiness of her nah. character. But come on, for, for God's sakes. Like, I'm going to give myself a bath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah! I will say, though, in terms of her environmentalism in this movie, it's notable she's got goldfish there, and those goldfish seem to survive this freakout. So at least she yeah. was thinking of the fish. She didn't smash yeah. the goldfish bowl. Or eat them, you know, like a cat would. It's yeah. already established as well. She's She does have a problem, at least with her mother. Yeah. So I think she's kind of smashing this picture because her mother's kind of the symbol of everything she's trying to get rid of. Everything mm. she was trying to destroy by moving to this city in the first place. Yeah. By getting away yeah. from her mom. And it, the frustrations have just come out now. It's, it, mm. Now she's, she's trying to just completely shed that light. Yeah. That's also then quite notable that, like, just smashes the pictures of the family and stuff. And then the next thing she smashes is a mirror in which she can see herself, which is obviously very symbolic in the fact that she, her as a person has been completely shattered. Uh, it's also quite notable as well that the surrounding the mirror is loads of little ornaments of birds. And there's one in the top left corner for a split second. Apparently it's just like something else reflecting on it to make it look like that. But I thought it was a little bird wearing a top hat. I was like, oh, my God, it's foreshadowing. <laughs> it's foreshadowing our logo for the season. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, that's not quite. But there is, in a couple of seconds, there is foreshadowing of the penguin. But we'll get to that in the, when, well, when we get I, there. I love how um, she is. Let's be honest. She's like all 90s children's first look into BDSM. <laughs> like, she, she is. Like, her outfit, her demeanor, like, that whole, mm. her claws, like, it is that. It's quite, it's quite insane that, like, you don't really notice it until later. And doesn't she have a whip? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah this is a BDS character. She is literally that. It explains mm. a lot about my life. Yeah, kind of mine, too, to be honest. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to be a mom. I can't believe it. There's a lot of crap I got her, like, you know. <laughs> so, hey, you're not a mom yet, Stephanie. You get it all out now. Yeah, Quick. Then. Yeah. Get it all out of my system. I don't know. There's a lot of fetishes for, like, pregnant ladies, so, so it is what it is. <laughs> It's like as soon as that um, baby comes, you have to be all your all pink sweaters and uh, <laughs> wash no, my, that blue out of your hair. <laughs> Just my get mom, rid of all my that. mom, my mom was kind of a little bit like she's like, "So are you are you still gonna do that burlesque?" I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I hadn't really practiced or done anything. I think I have to just to prove that I could get back into it because I think women like you know after you have a kid, you're so labeled as like, well, you're a mom now. You can't be doing <laughs> so, but. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And you need to retain your identity as well as being a mom. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Woman, hear me roar. <laughs> Sorry. Be fair, though, like, we, me and John both know a, a woman who has had two kids. It doesn't seem to have, like, she still puts up pictures of the kids and they takes care of them herself, but it doesn't really seem to have affected her lifestyle all that much. She's still out at the weekends and stuff in her leather jackets with her tattoos and living at large and whatnot. So I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should. You, you can't, you can't, or else you resent your kids and you don't want that. You have yeah, to be like yeah, your own a, person. There, there's an angle, though, of, you know, again, talking about like families and then Selena. Because the thing is, you know, her mother henpecking her, it just seems like, oh, she keeps ringing her. That doesn't seem that bad, though, but maybe it's alluding to a bigger problem with her. Like, her mother is very overbearing. It's a bigger problem. I, I know people who've been through this. The thing is, though, it's an interesting contrast in our in our trio of main characters here because you consider bruce wayne no parent you know had parents ripped away from him devastated ruined his entire life essentially oswald cobblepot has had two parents got they got rid of him and then you got catwoman here has overbearing mother she's rejecting that and you know that, that's the last we ever hear of uh selena's mother she never comes back up well you don't become like a costume you don't become a costume and based to uh... A person of Gotham City, if you have like well adjusted parents and a good family, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem like that. It's a bit of an odd coincidence um, that it's another animal based one. They all are, actually. Mm. Except, uh. well, these three. Um, <laughs> That's why you get down into like the condiment king. <laughs> when he's like, hey, all the animals were taken, all right? What do you want me to do? <laughs> oh, here he is. Crazy quilt showing up. It was like, yeah, we ran out of animals a long time ago, man. <laughs> oh, man. We need a, we need a squirrel. I was going to say a squirrel, but I suppose Marvel have got that. Oh, yeah, squirrel girl. So, you know, she's, she's doing quite well for herself. Although she's a heroic character. So Yeah, but I've been told like, good uh... things about it. Yeah, I've been told that that's actually like a character. To, you know, that's interesting. I've I've heard that Mar Marvel... I haven't been mm. up to date in Marvel in like probably more than a decade. So 
Um, I don't know what, mm. what the hell's going on. I did read Squirrel Girl for a while, but it got a bit, because it's very, very light. It's much more aimed to a younger crowd. And it kind of got to a point like she's pretty much like a perfect character. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah, she never has. She's always super nice. She's always perky. She's uh, old. She's never in trouble. Every I, she can solve any situation. It's just like, no, this is not like this is interesting anymore. Dare you say Mary Sue, the internet's favorite f- <laughs> phrase? Let's even even that though, because like I, I think though, Ray has an arrogance and stuff about her that I think is is supposed. To be- I think so too. I think Ray has more personality than people. Absolutely. Give her credit. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't hate Ray. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. I, I think she should have more trials and tribulations than she does, but um, mm. I don't dislike her in the play that some people just can't stand her. Now, I feel bad for, what's her name, um, Kelly Marie Tran, but I hate Rose. Oh, I don't hate Rose. I mean, I don't I don't love Rose or anything, but she's fine. She's all right. She's obnoxious. She reminds me of, okay, I'll tell you one thing. Like that scene where she has to save the animals, but she leaves all the enslaved children behind. Uh, like, that is upset. That reminds me, like I always say, I'm like, that's your your vegan friend who takes a bunch of coke at a party. That they give you all type of crap about you know eating meat, but like that coke is not like ethically sourced <laughs> by any means. All right, so put a lid on it. All right, that's what she reminds me of. <laughs> and that horrible kiss with her and Finn, like that's not her fault. That's like bad writing or directing or some crap. Because I was like, why did she kiss him? Like, I get that they like gone on an adventure together, but like there was no hint whatsoever that she was into. That guy. Yeah, it does come out of nowhere. I'll agree with that. So that's one thing I'll uh, definitely say. I always resent any kind of forced romance into any situation because there seems to be an illusion at the end of the Last Jedi that like, oh, maybe Ray and Poe were going to get together, and everything about like, oh no, because because Finn likes Ray, and I was like, I just thought they were friends. So why can't they just be friends? And Kylo Ren likes Ray too. All right, let's face it. The thing facts. is though, because Kylo Ray and Kylo Ren and Ray getting together would be more interesting though. F- Finn and Ray is like, I don't care. <laughs> That's what, okay, admittedly, like, you know, I have very mixed feelings on, like, The Last Jedi, even though we're getting into The Last Jedi debate, like, every, like, the whole internet has. Um, like, I, I also don't hate it, like, some people hate it, but, like, it would have been, like, I would have been so happy if Rey would have gone with Kylo Ren. I was like, that's what needed to happen. Oh, totally. I was like, yeah, yeah it makes yeah. sense. This whole Jedi Sith thing. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Oh, my God. You got me on board. You have me on board so much. It like, you know, the whole movie, I get what you mean now, <laughs> Ryan Johnson. And then he's like, no. I'm like, what the, what the hell kind of cock tease was that? Why? <laughs> well, wait and see. Wait for the next one. You never know. But that was that was my 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 beef with the movie was just the fact that it introduces all these great concepts and teases you with them, and then at the end everything's exactly the way it was, the way it was back at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like he's still evil. Kylo Ren is just as much of a villain as before. It's like yeah, but yeah, Yoda Yoda destroyed the Jedi text. No, I didn't. <laughs> Ray's got him. Like, <laughs> yeah. So like, what the what was the point of this? Why why did I watch this movie? <laughs> the rock. It's it's not about moving rocks. <laughs> except now she's moving rocks. Ah, oh, you know. Uh, Luke wasn't like, oh man, that whole thing. Luke is not really dead, but he's dead. It's like, what? Well, I mean, we have Selena here who, was she dead? <laughs> is she not dead? I have no idea. But she, she does the spray painting bit you mentioned earlier. She spray paints the, the wall and door, but, uh, seemingly randomly. There's no, no message or anything. Sam. Yeah. But you wanted to do like a like a statement graffiti piece or something. Yeah, like you know, some kind of cat themed piece. Be good. You know, this you know your your mixed messages right here though, because she opens yeah. up the the wardrobe. She's got like a pink, I guess it's a nighty that's got uh, little cute friendly cats, and she blacks them out. Yeah, they're too cute. Yeah, I was like, I thought she was all about the cats, but like, no, no, she, they're yeah, too cute, but too cute. Man, oh, there's the- cats and there's cats. There's these little cute furry things, and then there's street cats. Uh. But this is the the thing that I was amazed. I never noticed this before. Because this is like, holy crap! Like, they, yeah, they 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 suddenly placed in on the, on the hanger the of the nighty. There, you've got two penguins, a penguin yes. with a, a penguin with a top hat, and a and a, a like a, a Mrs. Penguin, I guess. Yeah, she's got like a like a feather. Yeah, and it says uh, it's the dress up with professional dry cleaning. So I guess she dry cleaned. The nighty? I don't know. That seems a bit excessive. I, I, I'm going to say she's just using the hanger for some previous dry cleaning. No. no it makes more sense, I guess. But uh, you take the label off, wouldn't you? I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe it's printed on. I don't know. I've only ever dry cleaned a jacket a couple of times, and it was always smelt weird. Yeah, dry, dry cleaning is... Yeah, I hate dry cleaning. Like, I don't even like to buy clothes. Like, I will not buy clothes that's dry clean only unless, like, it's absolutely, like... <laughs> 
Oh, it's rare as crap. It has to be like a like a ball dress. Most stuff that says dry clean yeah. only, I just put it in the washing machine anyway. <laughs> <laughs> And it's fine. It's I fine. admit that I lost a good. I lo- No, I did lose a cashmere sweater. Then. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I do have some things as well that say like wash cold, and I I do that because I'm paranoid about that. <laughs> I, know, I'm, 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 I am everything. Everything in the wash machine as like labels. What? Like a day if it's ruined, it's ruined. Like a, <laughs> yeah, no, oh, I'm, no, I'm like that. I definitely am like a. But yeah, I was, I was surprised though. Like that was such a. A subtle bit of placement of of, of mise en scène there. The fact that they have like a, a little penguin on her on her thing. It's like yeah, it's because again, it's a it's a, it's a penguin as part of a couple, and she will briefly have a a couplehood with the penguin, kinda like she, the of team sorts. up. Yeah, it, it kind of very kind of. It seemed always a little weird to me. It does. I think like, it, it maybe lasts about maybe like ten minutes of the movie as well. It's like yeah, we're doing this now, and then hey, we did a thing. Oh no, that's, that's over. <laughs> that's like I, I find that more realistic though than a long term team up. Yeah. I'm not going to say too much because we'll get there. But what Batman forever? I like the way they just both. <laughs> well, oh yeah, Jesus. Now the way they both have a similar ish goal, similar, and uh, she kind of exploits his <laughs> his dirtiness, shall we say? Uh, get... <laughs> she knows a... he'll do anything that she wants. No, uh, that's just looking forward though. They're going to be covering that next year. The the team up of the like the Two Face and that version of the Riddler. Don't you? And you they can, hated each um, other. Tommy Lee Jones hated Jim Carrey so much. It's like an so I, w- I would I would love this because apparently one of the things he said to Jim Carrey, and I'd love that they just had a scene of Two Face and the Riddler was, "I cannot sanction your buffoonery." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'd be, oh, oh, that would be the best scene in the movie if the two of Two Face said that to the Riddler at some point. I am using that in conversation <laughs> yes. from now. On. <laughs> <laughs> we got we have a whole movie to talk about Jim Carrey next year, so that's uh, back back to Michelle Pfeiffer. Okay, <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, all kids' introduction to what BDSM is. <laughs> it certainly was mine. <laughs> like, um, yeah, you know, and yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm hoping, like, you know, fingers crossed, there's someone I'm hoping is going to come on in January who is a person involved in the YouTube community who does a lot of stuff about like kinks and stuff like that. I, I used to, but like my cousin was a total psycho bitch oh. about it. Like I used to have um on my channel, I used to have several videos about um because I I did uh, a little bit of dominatrix work before. Mm. Um, like the funny thing is, everybody thinks it's so sexual, and I was like, there was no. It was acting. It's literally acting. It is a character, and people pay you to be this character, and that's what they want. They want you to be a character. And you know what? It's just like, you know, to me, it's like a, a one, like you're just performing for one. And uh, they, they want this for like whatever, several hours. But, you know, it weirded out my family, so I couldn't do it anymore. They were like, yeah, yeah, they, they got totally Aww. weird about it. And then my cousin, like uh, to be a jerk, uh, started to post my these specific YouTube videos on my mother's Facebook page. Oh, that's uh, a bit yeah, cheeky. That's yeah. not good. Yeah, yeah. Not, not very nice. So, uh, uh, but no, I... I I'm very like open about that kind of stuff. Um, the funny thing is, actually, my mother has asked me before. She's like, "Does your husband know?" I'm like, "What? What did you really think? Like, we didn't bother <laughs> discussing this ever. Is that what you think about this?" It's, I hate to sound like a whinging young person because I'm not young, but that is it's a, such an old attitude to have. I think, mm. and may, maybe because we grew up watching things like this and you know <laughs> liking these kind of characters. I don't know what it is that sparks it in your brain. That does seem like that could be like a like a rom com in the making though of like someone who was a dominatrix and then their husband yeah. or like her her love interest doesn't know and then at the end they're then the third act he finds out and they have that bit where they break up and then <laughs> they, they, they there's a bit of them running through the streets and stuff and oh they use it but it's like <laughs> nah it's a yeah no people get like all crazy about it but actually you know this movie was like everybody's introduction to it it really was like she's her outfit is like well. It's certainly not possible with what she uses, but that's, I guess, the next one. <laughs> that, that's the thing, actually. Cause I was talking about the, the interviews with the Barry Norman. And that's the thing, though, because everyone in those interviews, like, they're all individuals. Uh, like, um, like, So he's, like, one-on-one with everybody. But because, like, Dan DeVito is very friendly. Tim Burton is very, very friendly. I was surprised how, like, friendly Tim Burton was with him. Uh, Michael Keaton's in great form. Michelle Pfeiffer seems very sort of distant. And I don't know if it's because Barry Norman opens the interview talking about like how kinky it is, and he's like, "Oh, don't you think you're gonna be like getting a couple of weirdos off on this? Like you're doing this real kinky bondagey kind of outfit and stuff." And she's just very like, 
uh, yeah, maybe. And like he starts going on about the whip and stuff. And she just, throughout the whole rest of it, she just seems very uncomfortable with him. <laughs> and I don't know if it's because she's just like, oh, this is an old 60 year old man and talk. And maybe he, is he getting off on it or? Um, I think there's definitely, there's, there's a whole, she's a very sexualized character. I mean, I think Catwoman has always been a sexualized character in any form she's taken. Like, I've never seen one form where she's not. But it's okay. Like, I'm not these types where like, and they shouldn't mm. be sexy. Because I could go back into like my problem with Ray and be like, why can't Ray have a man? Is this his whole thing? She's like, oh no, got to be strong and independent <laughs> woman. I'm like, what? Uh, can't she get some freaking, you know, action too? <laughs> Ladies, we like, like, but I'm not lying. Finn, sure. Bon John Boyega is a good looking man, you know, or I'll take Kyle Let's take a both. Why not? <laughs> well, I'd say as a, as a man, though, so maybe I'm, you know, looking at it slightly differently. I'd say she's, she, like Michelle Pfeiffer in this, she's, she's sexy, but. She's always in control. It, it, like she's yeah, she's a very empowered. Yeah, character. she's the powerful one. She uses it to. She's very almost scary. Like as a kid, I'd also be quite scared of her. Yeah, she's clo- she she sticks her claws at people, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> this is a scary lady. Mm. Yeah, so it's slightly it's slightly different to the way some people complain about it. Like, but then some people complain about Slave Leia, and I I always just say, well, Leia ends up killing the villain. So, you know, you, with with the thing he was oppressing her with. I think even Carrie Fisher made that point herself. It was like, well, I don't, you know, it, it, the whole point of the outfit is that it's designed to degrade her initially. And then she uses the, the tools of the, the degradation to kill yeah. the guy who's doing it to her and stuff. And yeah. that, that, that was one of those things because I think they, they changed the name to Hutzler Leia. I was like, there you go. That's fine then. If you don't want to call her Slave Leia, Hutzler Leia. Just keep everything the same. Fine. Sorted. And then D- Disney got rid of all that stuff. But uh, but yeah, the, 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 this minute though, we seem to we're pretty much at the end here. Like Selena starts yeah, uh, yeah. rifling through the wardrobe, seeing if she can uh, get anything she likes. Uh, she seems to, I don't know if she's looking for something in particular. She does seem to be have a determined look on her face of like I'm looking for, like she has this jacket in mind already. But um, yeah, it's, it doesn't seem all that random. It which is odd because. Mm. I, I, even that gives even more evidence to our running thing of like this. This is always within her. This it's just ready to burst out, and yeah, the things that have happened have just brought it forth. Mm. So she knows what she's going to do. She's been thinking about this. That does the thing. Though. Here's a question: Have you guys, have either of you, ever trashed a room out of frustration? Yes. Because I've yes. never done it because I've always <laughs> been very well aware of like my. I've never trashed like a full room, but um, I have like broken things out of rage. Like I did it one time, um, like, I don't know. I don't want to give away too much of my personal craziness, but something got me really mad and I grabbed a plate and I smashed it against the wall. And I think I took something else and I smashed that too. Mm. Uh, but I don't do it too often because I also realize no matter how angry I get, I'm like, you're going to be the one to clean up the shit. Yeah. yeah. And pay for so, it as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm like, this is mm. at one point, this is something you have mm. to do. The, the, the only closest I've ever come was like, I never would have done it when I was younger because my parents would have killed me. And then when I was older, I was very much aware of like, well, I bought this stuff. This is stuff I had to pay for. But I did at one point break a cup out of frustration. And the thing is, it was like a big, it was my go-to cup. It was a big giant thing that held like three cups of tea in it. Oh, and every, no. every, every cup since has been inferior to that cup. I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have broke that. Like it was, so, it was such a good damn cup. Just but it was, buy another one. You can't find it again. Yeah, I just can't track it down at all. It's really, really frustrating. And even the one I have now is slightly bigger than your average cup, but it's like it's not big enough. This is like uh, this is like one cup. How much tea do you need? Well, the thing is, I only dr- I only drink three in a day, but it's like I work from home, so like I don't get out to see what the the offices of the world are like. But I did briefly work in a, an old folks' home, and I remember being astounded by the people who worked there had a cup of tea like every five minutes i was like well, I, I do i do have about six cups of coffee a day and then a red bull oh the see that would kill me like i would actually kill me and that's the thing because i think my brother is only he's like 40 odd he's only really discovered the the the, the strength of coffee recently and he's like oh my god coffee's amazing i never realized how good it was before but i've always been like growing up with like oh i grew up watching twin peaks and then the gilmore girls where you're just hearing coffee 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 and i've had coffee and i'm like ah. Eh. It's okay, but like I'm <gasps> blasphemer. I can't, I can't drink coffee. I hate coffee. Ah! But I think I'm just I I'm am. just getting that. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if maybe it's a, a family thing that we have sort of sensitive bladders or something. Because like I am slowly turning into my dad now, and the fact that like I have to get up 
two or three times in the night to go to the toilet. Oh, I'm the same. Don't worry. It's just age, man. It's just well, age. The thing is, then, if I drink more than those three cups of tea a day, that's me going to the toilet every 20 minutes. Like that's And it, and it's pro- it's just like, if you look at it too, it's oh, completely man. clear liquid that's coming out. It's not even... Oh, yeah, yeah. Same here. I, I literally go every hour and it's completely clear. <laughs> I, can't, I can't handle that, though. It's just like, no, nah, no, nah, I just need to... Well, I, I thought about that because uh, I don't know if you guys know that there's pregnancy, but yeah, your bladder is being smashed bits right now. Like that kid is riding on your blood. Like, oh yeah, do you like that? Oh. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't had to run off to the bathroom more often in this recording. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, now I'm scared to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I was like, I'm thinking we'll listen back to the audio and you just faintly hear the sounds of Stephanie urine urinating throughout the entire thing. Oh, uh, I am a mas- I am a master covert peer. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a cup and one of those, uh, sh- what's it called, a she-wee? Uh, no, you haven't. Like, though. <laughs> okay, so like, this is weird TMI information. So uh, my husband was a professional poker player, so there's sometimes he can't literally, like he'll be playing online and he can't literally leave the table. So um, he has like those like camper, you know, camper takeaway johns, I think is what they're called or something like that. And he just has them next to him. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I gotta go. <laughs> and he's like, okay. <laughs> just opens one up. <laughs> As long as he's not on camera or mic. No, 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 he's not on either of them, but it's always, like, quite funny, because, like, I think at first I made fun of him, and then, like, then I realized when he said, I would buy it for him, I'm like, oh, don't worry, I got him for you. <laughs> I do know, like, a little bit of uh, inside baseball, though, of, um, like, a, one of our uh, former guests, Gary Gavigan, confessed to me after we finished his recording last year that at one point he actually did get up and go to the bathroom and went and talked to his wife for a bit, and we never noticed that he was gone. <laughs> But anyway, I guess we're pretty much done for this minute, though. We can probably wrap this one up. And, yeah. Yep, good, because I do actually have to go to the bathroom now. But yes, we will depart for now and leave you on this Wednesday. Uh, Stephanie, you'll be joining us again on Friday, won't you? So uh, would you like to tell our listeners how they can get in touch with you if they want to, I don't know, c- compliment you or complain? <laughs> oh, well, if you want to complain, you can suck my butt off. <laughs> but um, if, yeah, it's fine. I get my daily, nothing. Now they've gone down to weekly. <laughs> Complaints, uh, uh, but you can find me. Uh, I am known as Caffeine Jedi, which is C A F F I N E Jedi on YouTube. I'm known as the same thing on Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, basically all of those. I don't think I'm on LinkedIn, but I wouldn't want you guys to find me there anyway. That's <laughs> oh, we've got a LinkedIn actually. If, if anyone wants to add. I'm on there as an individual, but we also have a business page. I, I really like need to update that LinkedIn. I literally think that LinkedIn was updated in 2008. So, um, whoops, a while. <laughs> well, up- update it, and then we we can all add each other. And yeah, no, I don't know the about listeners, that. I... You can all you can all add us. Well, you can, you can add me anyway. I don't know about the others. Niles is like a fake profile that I made. <laughs> what? I, I don't know. I've gotten quite. Like I, I get tired of people adding me. Like um, I, I had to like put up my, my. You know how you usually only add people who you have mutual friends with. At least that's what I do most of the time. Like my yeah, threshold yeah. for mutual friends amounts is now larger because I'm like, nah, three is too little. I need at least six. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hate it when you see like uh, people you may know and it's someone and it'll say like 38 friends in common and you're like, I don't know who this is. <laughs> so, who is this person? I had this, uh, recently I've been doing a lot of voice recordings for Lemon Drop, um, and there was a guy who I hired, um, and after hiring him, I realized he's my Facebook friend. Don't even realize it. And then he messages me to thank me and says he can't catch up. And I'm like, who the hell is this? Um, (laughs) And it's like, actually, it drives me nuts. Like, I'm like, I'm looking on his Facebook page and I'm like, for the life of me, I cannot remember. But we have a million mutual friends. And I'm like, all right. Think Stephanie, what trivial party did you meet this person at? That you this, this is like <laughs> that same group of people, so you know it's like that. That was like that crazy, kinky, sexy, druggy time in your life that you know because those are that like those are the mutual friends, and you're like you know trying to go back in time of all these weird drug hazes, and finally you give up and you like one of your friends comes over and and they are mutual friends with them, and I'm like, dude, how do I know him? Come on, I know you know. Oh yeah, and they say the exact party. They say exactly when, and I was like, "Oh, okay." And then, like when he came over, I was like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> how have you been? Oh, Great to see you again." Okay. And I'm like, "Okay, I remember you." You just play along. <laughs> oh hi, yeah, how are yeah. you? Yeah, I did a little bit of a Facebook stalk. I'm like, "Oh, I see you got a dog." Okay, I was like, "Yeah, I totally was that." But I mean, you know, I'll say that he was a character. 
I made oh god, I made him cry. I made all the actors cry. I mean, not like because I was mean to them, but I needed them to get into character. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Phil Spector used to record his record. That wasn't me. I just psychologically destroyed them. I didn't psychologically destroy them. I just turned off the lights and told them what scene they were in and explained the situation <laughs> the character was in and where they well, had to yeah, get Phil to. Phil Spector used to produce and record albums with people by doing similar things and holding a pistol to them. Mm. <laughs> okay, I didn't do that much. <laughs> he he uh, uh, kidnapped him, basically the Ramones and, and threatened them with a pistol. <laughs> but he's he's in jail for various reasons. But we will we will leave you all uh, to go off and do nefarious deeds that land you in jail. And if you somehow escape the law, then do join us again on Friday. We will wrap up this week, and we will wrap up Stephanie's guest appearances. Sadly, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a great minute and a great episode. See you then next time. Tailoring swiftly. Selena erratically elects her new epidermis in a tantalizing episode you won't want to miss. But while some lascivious latex meets her approval, which two expendable alphabetical assets will be deemed fit for removal? Find out Friday. Same bat pod, different bat minute.